Hello everyone and welcome to my video. I'm Ribert and this is one of my builds. Um, this is actually episode 3. I did two of these kind of builds before and this continues in the same city, same, same little area and um, yeah I'm just gonna build a nice little area but first I'm gonna show you around the city so as you can see here there's a bunch of farms where I started off and this is uh, one of the earlier neighborhoods I designed I locked most of those small houses because I thought they looked really nice so I made them all historical so they wouldn't change uh, this is the island that I made I wanted to make a bit of a business district island because I thought it would look kind of cool with the towers that would develop like that. Um, this is uh, the second neighborhood that I designed. I actually had a lot more high rises in mind when I designed this, but uh, it just developed like a, a lot of mansions and uh, very rich uh, people buildings. So I thought it looked all right. And I don't really understand uh, what causes the skyscrapers to pop up sometimes I uh, guess it has to do with land value but also with maybe average density on your map or something like that uh, but it, uh, they wouldn't develop into big skyscrapers and so this is one of the uh, hourglass kind of things that I made with uh, residential on the bottom and some commercial on the top and um, here you can see a little bit of a uh, Boulevard road I made with some uh, yeah some nice coastal development there. This is a bit of a office neighborhood with a little bit of a pet mall. Uh, what do you call it? A bridge, a little pet mall bridge. And well, this is this is kind of how the how I designed the whole city. It was a a pretty long process. I had a little bit of offices over there or shops. I don't really know. And this is pretty much as far as that um, side of the river goes f for now. I I think I'll expand the office parts over there. Maybe do some development on this industrial because it looks kind of weird right now. And so that's the city as it is now here you can see an overview of the ferry traffic where they are all going and it, it's kind of creating a little bit of a spider wrap of traffic across the water which i find kind of interesting they all connect up together so it's a pretty efficient way for your sims to move around and here i'm gonna start to build now first i'm I'm planning to have a big park in the middle here so I was kind of um, imagining the shape of the park and how I would want the roads to go um, and here I'm just using some fractional angles and diagonal roads to uh, more concretely uh, shape it out as you can see I did a bit of practice beforehand in order to be a bit more smooth in the way I built these fractional angles I'm still gonna struggle at some point but um, it's gonna be a bit smoother than the last video last video took me way too long to, to get some of the parts to look kinda alright but I'm, I'm still gonna have some moments where um, I, yeah, I, I can't get the landscape to fit right or stuff like that but that's just part of the game that's the way it's designed and the way I play it I guess I mean I could just leave this like this and they would be functional but I kinda like smooth roads where you don't see that there's some impossible angles going on and the funny thing is this road I'm, I'm probably gonna rebuild it like three times throughout this video because I keep um, running into things that make it have to go a little bit different and then uh, the, the angles change of the road and I have to use rails again in order to make it smooth but uh, for now um, 
I did find a way to make this kind of smooth in the end by using some rails and um, yeah, using some rails and uh, picking a good diagonal. Um, so what am I planning for this for this big um, part of the city? Um, well, the idea that I had was to um, to make a big uh, area based on fractional angles because I think they're quite interesting and they can make for some interesting shapes. So what I um, was planning was to just do a very big area with a fractionally angled grid. But then I got the idea of making a bit of a circle shape uh, by combining the fractional angles with some regular diagonals and to make some transitions so that's what I ended up doing and here you can see me trying to plan out the road network and I'm trying to keep the spaces in between these roads suitable for making uh, some residential development or even commercial development so I don't want them too big and I don't want them too small and uh, well the thing the nature of diagonals and the way um, zoning works in this game uh, it causes a, a lot of dead space in between the roads and that's even after the roads already take up a lot of extra area themselves because they take twice as much area to cover a certain distance because there's a lot of overlapping going in between the roads so as you can see here there's a lot of these little areas but I think that's fine this it gives you spaces to put some trees and some parking lots like I did here and yeah I had to figure this one out a, a bit because I wanted to put a parking lot in that little spot over there and this is the way I got it to not connect up on the other side and actually look like a parking lot and I just copied that over there, over here I kinda like this look with the little parking lots parking lots make a lot of sense to me because where I live we, uh, most neighborhoods have a lot of parking lots and yeah um, this on average I think two parking spaces per home well I, I don't get that far with this build but uh, some parking lots go a long way to making it look a bit more realistic so here I'm just thinking about the area that I have here and thinking about how I'm gonna make this outer road line up and well it lined up a bit weird so I decided to sacrifice some farmland in order to make it better and now yeah the diagonal wouldn't line up so I had to make a compromise now this compromise ends up working out okay in the end uh, but I won't spoil that I guess so it's just small decisions about how you're gonna make it that and the more small decisions you have to make um, it causes you to have um, a more interesting layout in the end because it makes for less uniformity across your areas so I think yeah just going in and derping around a little bit is actually a good strategy for making interesting neighborhoods because it it makes you find new solutions to problems that you didn't even think about before and yeah when you're joining up a straight road into a fractional angle you should just start dragging from the fractional angle as you could see there I did it the other way around and the odds of lining up is just so bad that you should just start off with the fractional angle unless you you're a very lucky person and always get it right the first time but yeah just start with the fractional angle nobody is that lucky so I'm just filling in some well I'm extending the roads 
seeing how the zoning works in this part because um, you can't just copy the first part into the second part for some reason I think it's because the the intersections shifted the alignment a bit on the other side so you have to make a new design for the second part and yeah here I'm I don't know why I started with intersections here because I wasn't really gonna build all the way to the edge of the map there so later on I understand that that doesn't really make sense I think yeah I should I should discover that pretty soon and there's these two fractionally angled roads and they wouldn't line up because they're just a bit too close together as you can see it would look really derpy if you just force them together and now I figure out oh I can't make a T intersection there so I start over by doing the 5 into 2 6's and that makes a T intersection and here I'm looking at the zoning and I think well I just like patterns I guess as humans we are programmed to like patterns and I just decided to make a little bit of a sy symmetry over there because I thought it would look more natural I guess and here I'm just trying all different kinds of solutions to make it merge without it without having to make them both go straight and in the end um, I decide to just not merge them over there so yeah um, I think this is about where I understand that it's just not gonna work out sometimes it's okay to give up on an idea and to just find a different idea and this different idea was to just make it a road that connects over here makes sense people can go to work on the farms or can go out of the city you see a lot of those roads in normal cities and it yeah I think this connection also makes a bunch of sense now at first I wanted to do a transition into fractional angle but that didn't line up so I just decided to go for a straight bit of road there and here I'm continuing the grid I'm uh, planning to do a couple more episodes in this in this area over here um, first of all I'm planning to actually develop the park that I've been talking about for a couple of episodes because uh, I'll do some work on it in this video but it you can't really call it a park yet at the end of this video it's just a big forest in the middle of the city so I'm planning to do some experimenting and find some interesting things over there um, so that would be the fourth video and I think the fifth video um, would be me extending the office part on the other side of the water but I'm not sure yet on the fifth video but eventually I'm planning to start a new region and to just uh, I might even do a bit of a tutorial video on how I would start a new region and what I think are some good tips and tricks for players who struggle with um, making money early on or and stuff like that because there's some pretty simple things you can do uh, that are a bit I don't know they're not really exploits uh, some of them are exploits and they're not very realistic but if you're struggling I, I think it's alright to use some exploits to get into the game and if you're just looking to design some nice cities I think it's yeah perfectly alright to use some exploits in order to get the money you need to develop the nice areas you want to want to develop yeah so here I'm zoning some low density commercial well here I'm already working on the next part but as you can see with the low density commercial there's a lot of uh, grass forming around the roads um, 
but when you use medium density and uh, you use the sandstone mod that I'm using, I think I've linked that in the description a couple times already, but I'll put it in there again. And it actually fills it up with pavement. And I think in vanilla it also fills it up with pavement, but then it looks like concrete, I guess. I can't really remember what vanilla looks like. I've been using this mod for so long. And yeah, here I'm just thinking, what kind of homes do I want here? And I would prefer to have some 2x2 two two homes develop because I think those have some pretty nice models uh, in, the, in their... Uh, well, there's some pretty nice models possible there. And here, this little bit of road. It was a bit of a struggle and I had to make a compromise in the end. I wanted to make the straight bit just... Yeah, I wanted to do something like that, but without it connecting to the main road twice. So I ended up doing this and it works. Sometimes you just have to think of the easiest way to do things instead of the prettiest way. So yeah, well it still looks equally pretty I think. The difference was so small that I don't know why I struggled there. Um, yeah, so here I'm looking and one of them wasn't connected so I thought let's just put some commercial in there. And well since that's such a long bit of road I thought it would look better to use uh, something other than uh, the parking lot uh, sand texture. There something dropped out about my controls and went all the way across the screen. I don't really know what happened there. Yeah, so here I'm probably going to figure out... Oh no, I'm just zoning some more. Yeah, the default zoning, when you just drag, it, it, it's almost never perfect. And there's, when, when you just drag some zoning, I don't know whether it's really hard to make that work very nice, or whether they just thought it was functional enough for new players, and uh, players that who cared would just do some fine dragging of zones, like I... I'm doing here. So yeah the default zoning is a bit derpy. Here I'm just putting on some trees because I thought it would look kind of nice. In hindsight I think some of those smaller trees or plants that I put down earlier would have looked nice in com combination with the tall trees. But yeah now I've I actually had uh, this with as a high school, uh, a large high school spot in mind when I uh, built the grid like this. And so, yeah, uh, while zoning, I forgot about that. And now I remembered and I decided to just delete some of those um, parking areas that I put down. And here I'm just putting some medium density because I think it makes for a nice transition into the commercial area that I'm about to build over there. And it makes sense to not just have low density in an area like this, I think. There's always a bit of a transition from one zone into another. Into another. Putting down some water pipes. The trick for water pipes that I use is um, when you have a watered water pipe, and uh, you go to the edge of the watered part, you have to count six tiles, and then the seventh one is the where you have to put the next tile. Because they have a reach of six tiles. I guess ev yeah, probably everybody listening already knew that. Yeah, I tried to put in a little playground over there, but then I thought that doesn't make sense since it's so close near all the roads. It would just create a huge risk for kids walking into the road when playing. So I decided to put it down over there. Over there, the entrance of the school looked a bit weird. So I thought, let's put some pavement there. Putting some more trees where the zoning is empty. 
I'm not sure if those trees actually survive when a house pops up because sometimes I just delete trees that uh, are too nearby because I guess the trees have a, a footprint that is bigger than a tile sometimes or just overlaps another tile um, and some of those trees will uh, disappear when the houses develop yeah and I don't know what happened there I know why it became a weird derpy roundabout, but I don't know why I didn't notice it when I was playing. So I'm actually never gonna change that. <laughs> well, I'm gonna change it eventually. I'm I'm gonna off-screen it, but uh, yeah, I hope you don't mind. Uh, I'm sorry for those of you who have some form of OCD or whatever. Uh, I'm terribly sorry that I left it like that. Uh, I can't catch it all the time, I guess. Alright, so this is pretty much the housing area developed, well developed, uh, planned out. Because there's still zero houses there, so it's not really developed. And now it's time to think about continuing the, the road network. And at first I thought Maybe it lines up nice like that, but then I thought, no, that looks a bit weird. So I decided to go one over and do it like that, and it looks pretty cool. And then, uh, yeah, there's going to be a bunch of road building over here. So as you can see... <coughs> Um, when I design an area like this, I just start off by building the the main defining parts of an area first, and then later on I fill in the empty spaces. And yeah, I'm doing a bunch more work than I did in the previous videos here. It took a little bit longer to record, but not that much because I was kind of comfortable with the whole uh, fractional angle stuff this time so I was just able to work a bit faster and because I didn't have to do the coastal the the, the whole coastal bits um, I had some more time to just zone areas and make some nice uh, fractionally angled um, neighborhoods I guess you'd call them and here I'm trying out uh, looking for how I'm gonna do the crossroads and then I thought wait I have to start with a T intersection at the edge because else it might not line up so that's when I got smart and I just started the road from the left side and here I just counted the amount of empty spaces in between the roads I had before and I copied that over in order to keep it uniform and to ensure it will, it will line up, of course, because if you don't change something uh, the next time you build it, then it's just going to line up again the same way. Here I'm trying to smooth out some roads. And smoothing out roads like this. Um, in the previous videos I just flattened out the whole area. But I guess it's interesting to show some techniques to f flatten out roads. Um, later on and I guess the technique that I'm showing here is keep trying but uh, a better technique would be to actually uh, yeah try something else like using wheels on the outside of the road that would have helped a lot and over here I'm just trying to flatten some more roads and as you can see <coughs> some of the rails, because the rails already have a defined angle and that carries over to the roads that are next to it and that causes, because um, the rails can be angled along the rail but not across the rail, they have to be perfectly flat so when you start dragging a rail um, it either has to flatten the other rail uh, when you dra drag it from an angled rail Okay, so 
Yeah, what I'm doing... I kind of wanted to finish that story. Uh, okay. Just quick, I'm just looking at all the buildings and looking for nice footprints. Um, just with in mind what kind of buildings I wanted to spawn. And this is the Houston architecture. I've been using that throughout the city because I think it looks kind of interesting. And this is just me inspecting what kind of buildings I want. Okay, so about um, smoothing rail, smoothing with rails. When you drag a rail uh, perpendic perpendicular from another rail, it um, has to flatten out a bit where it starts. So um, that can sometimes limit um, when you can drag a rail. So that's why it was showing up all the red when I was dragging it because it would have needed to override something that uh, the game decided didn't want to be overridden. And I think that's alright because it would have derped out the, the work I did before. Yeah, so here I'm just trying to zone as many 2x3s or 3x3s because I thought those looked kind of interesting. And I ju I'm just looking for an, a good variation. And then I decided, wait, I still need to add some land value, so I'm just sacrificing some of those 3x3s and 2x2s, or just part of the 2x3s, in order to get some nice parks in there. And here I'm just placing some buses over here. Now I didn't place any bus stops in the rest of the neighborhood, and at first that's something I just totally forgot. And I think I might add them later on. But I'm also gonna end up placing some garages over there. So they can use the car to get to the bus stops. Or to get to the monorail that I'm, uh, that I'm gonna end up building around here. So maybe it's alright. But I think it, it would help to put some more bus stops over there. And because this, com this is commercial... Uh, you can just use pet malls to connect those up. You don't have to use the little parking areas that I did in the residential. <coughs> I've actually looked into why um, residential doesn't work with pet malls. And it has something to do with the way people find their jobs. The job finding algorithm needs a street or a road connection. Or an avenue, I guess, some form of road connection in order to initialize, I guess. And what you can do is use pet malls on one side of a building, uh, a residential building, and use streets on the other side and just make it um, very advantageous for them to use the pet malls. But they, there needs to be a road, there needs to be a, a way for them to use roads. To look for their jobs. I think that's a bit sad um, because, well, it's not really sad. I mean, of all the things that can be sad, I, I guess it's not really that bad, but it would have been cool uh, to have some, to have the ability to really make those European kind of um, uh, malls. Well, not just malls, but there's a lot of um, residential areas in in these small towns where I'm from, where you just have a bunch of pavement and uh, some centralized parking, but most of the area actually consists of um, just pavement and people need to walk to a parking area before they can get into their cars. It's not... Super common, but the more dense cities do have that a lot. Because in a dense city it's just more advantageous to... <coughs> well, when you live there, it's mainly people that just use public transport, I guess. I don't really know. Maybe it's just students that live in those kind of areas that already have free public transport anyway, so... 
Well, it's not just students. There's some very wealthy people living in those areas too. But I guess they do have parking garages for those people. I don't know. Maybe it's alright the way it is. We just need some better shopping assets that look a bit more old school, European style. I guess those must be on the stacks on Simtropolis, but I haven't found them yet. Yeah, so here I did some redesigning of that road that I talked about earlier. And I'm not sure it's actually perfect right now because I think it's still a little bit weird in terms of the angles, the steepness of the of the incline. I thought this looked a bit weird, a bit too square, so I decided to make it a bit more random. I just put in some uh, some small foliage in front of it. And I just started by putting something down, putting something else down, and kept going until I thought it looked kind of cool, kind of natural actually, cool. I don't know why I keep saying cool. I guess I'm just, I, I grew up in the 90s, so that's what we said back then. I'm not really trying to bring it back, but whatever. So as you can see here, I used some of the smaller foliage uh, on the trees that I planted earlier as well. And I think I should mix those things up a lot more. But, um, well, I'm gonna redevelop this whole park. Uh, in the next episode, so I'll try to pay attention to what kind of foliage I want where. I think I'll do some some water stuff as well. I'm not really gonna use Max's water, the regular water, but I'm probably gonna use some pond pond stuff or yeah. I just want to have a bit of a water thing because yeah, the park near where I used to live had a bit. Uh, a big pond and a smaller pond with uh, with a little bit of an animal uh, garden around it and I just I really loved sitting near the pond it's just so relaxing to look at water uh, just being moved by the wind and the trees around you so I think I'm gonna try to mimic something like that here I'm just looking at some graphs if you're interest interested in anything like that, you can pause the video. And that's when I noticed I'm losing money. Oh, well, I'm not losing money anymore without doing anything. But I still thought maybe I should redo the budgets. Because not that many people had moved in yet. And even though I'm on a million bucks, I think losing money in a game like this is always a sign that there's a structural problem. The problem here was that I had a big area that was uh, eating up a lot of resources in terms of budgeting and that just it hadn't developed enough uh, enough population in order to merit the amount of budgeting going in. Yeah, um, this is another compromise I had to do because um, the monorail can't cross fractionally angled roads. Uh, I didn't know that. I could have probably known that, if you think about it. It's a pretty specific thing to make when you're designing fractionally angled roads. And so I had to do some straight uh, transitions there. Uh, transitions into straight roads. Now I'm just planning out the monorail system. How I want to see the people moving around the city and I knew I wanted to do something near this office area and also near the road because there's gonna be more offices to the left of that road so I decided to put it there but uh, as you can see that looks pretty derpy now it looks a bit better but still pretty derpy and um, I think the fractionally angled road 
that you can see over there is causing it to derp out on the height so um, eventually I'll figure it out and this is just how making sm things smooth work sometimes just have to do stuff like this and now I thought well would be nice to have that road smooth oh derped out again so I just deleted the whole f whole road and I mean it's a bit of frustration but it's also a bit of a learning experience I think where you get more and more a feel of how the height stuff interacts and it's a process you can't expect to build smooth roads straight from the bed it takes a lot of practice and I really do admire people who uh, post some of those screenshots on reddit and on Centropolis they sometimes make really amazing stuff and I know I do post some stuff over there too but I'm not talking about myself when I say that I do like the stuff that I built but else I wouldn't have built it but there's some other people there that uh, are just so much better than me at these things so here we go the monorail is near the water this means it's bridge time well I want to have the bridge to be able to um, yeah for ferries to be going underneath it so I had to raise some land I think that worked out all right because the monorail was on some elevated land over there already but this the right hand shoreline from this view was a, a bunch lower than the left hand shoreline so I increased height by 50 meters on both sides but that means the right side is still a bunch lower and you can kind of see that on how straight the rails end up over there and I'm gonna improve on that but it's it's not gonna be perfect I don't know I just didn't want to deal with it too precisely because I didn't think it mattered that much and in the end I think it looks alright so here I'm looking across different bridges and I see hey, there's the same bridge but twice and I think, yeah, one of them is for high speed rails, which is a mod um, for monorail. And I'm not using that mod, so I needed the monorail uh, version of that bridge. And here I'm just. I'm gonna look for a way to put another monorail station over here, because I think it makes sense. To have this big office area with a nice monorail station but where would you put it and I thought let's make this a bit of a an area for the monorail sa station I'm probably gonna build a bit of a plaza around that in the fifth video but for now I think it's all right Place some bus stop there because it makes sense to have a bus stop near a monorail station even though it probably comes with one I, th I just think it looks more normal and that's one of the underground garages I'll put a link to it in the description it has a bit of uh, a few dependencies but it's not too bad and it looks kind of cool it might look a bit weird in those neighborhoods it would look more natural near a bunch of skyscrapers or big buildings, but I think that's alright. It's a game. It's not real life. It's just a game. So here I'm going with uh, some speed ups and just adjusting the budgets, keeping track of everything. And I'm pretty much done with this build. I'm gonna probably do some more zoning here. You can see the how much traffic is already going with the with the monorail, and it's 
Oh, I think it's not a super amount, but it's it's a lot, I think. For how 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 large this city is, it's not even 90k population. And that's uh, a bunch of people using either the ferries or the monorail, so I think that's a success. I uh, saw so those um, little uh, I can't find a job signs above some of the homes. So I thought, yeah, we need to put in some more commercial zoning. And that's what I'm doing here. Making sure they have water. And I saw the message from uh, some people were complaining about the amount of uh, landfill that I had. I'm using landfill in this one because I think it makes more sense in real life than having an incinerator. And I didn't want to have a lot of pollution in the city. And there's a large difference between the amount of pollution landfills cause and the amount of pollution an incinerator causes. So. I thought that was a good idea. And here I am just gonna zone some more commercial. I end up filling all that commercial or that area in with some more commercial zoning. And I'm just looking around the neighborhood. I think it looks very nice. I've never been to Houston. I've been to Chicago, but not to Houston. I don't know what Houston looks like. But I think the architectural pack in SimCity 4 that is called Houston, it's not really based on all only Houston buildings. I'm pretty sure that they just tried to make a style that reminded them of Houston um, but I think it must look very nice yeah here I'm finishing up with some northern trees you can see you can find a link to those trees in the description and here I'm placing a little bit of a museum because the other one was being overused. Yeah, here I'm zoning in the last bit of, ro of, of the zoning. Figuring out how to line it up. Now, I zoned this 5 by 4 and the stupid thing is, well stupid, well it's a bit stupid I guess, but I knew there wasn't gonna be a 5 by 4 because I looked at all those buildings earlier. So yeah, I don't know why I did this. I'm probably gonna change it to a 4 by 4 later on, but not during this video. Same as with the roundabout that you can actually see right now. <laughs> I'm just sometimes a bit blind to those things, I guess. And here I'm finishing up with some more trees along the edge of the neighborhood. Because I think it looks very nice to have some trees. And it makes sense to have some forest at the edge of a city, I think. And here are some closing shots of the city. I just put it to speed 1. I'm sorry if the frame rate is a bit weird. That's what the game looks like when I uh, am playing. I tried to do some nice close-ups in order for you to get a bit of a feel for the neighborhood. And here you can see some of the street lights. I don't know if it's a bug that some of them are blue, but I kind of like it. It looks pretty interesting. And here you can see a bit more of an overview. There's some roads over there that I still need to take care of. But some of the streets 
or just for flattening the sewer line, but I'll take care of that later. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'd like to see you again. Goodbye.